my behalf, uh, thanks to the organizers for putting together such a nice conference. Um, well, I suppose that many of you will not be surprised that I will be talking about Dark Earth. <laughs> um, but this time, not from Brussels, uh, nor from Flanders, but we will go a bit south uh, to the town of Mons. And during the excavations in 2013, 2014, the archaeologists found this, this kind of, uh, well, thick, dark olets, uh, humic, uh, homogeneous units <coughs> that covered the whole area of the site, um, which we now know as the dark earth, or for the French speaking people, Terre Noire. Um, and so, as we have already seen uh, during uh, several examples today, micromorphology can be a very rewarding uh, method to apply uh, uh, to study this kind of, uh, of units. So that's exactly what we did. But before entering into this micromorphological part, I will first give you an idea uh, about the setting. So the town of Mons is situated uh, in this area. Oh, it's not dark. Situated over here on a small hill hence its name Mons, and um, this hill is overviewing uh, the large valley of La Hena. The site itself, which is indicated in black there, uh, which is called Mundaneo, is situated uh, at the lower part of uh, the steep slope leading to the center of the town. You can again see the site, situation of the site over here, so at the lower part of the slope. This is an uh, aerial photograph of uh, the excavation. And well, we basically sampled three profiles uh, and this one here was basically our reference, reference profile and I will be focusing on this one today. You can see a very thick dark earth, not much to see within it, so basically we We'll have a look at the micromorphology. Well, when we start, I suppose that we propose that we go from uh, the bottom to the top. Now, as for what concerns the bottom part, we see that the parent material is composed of uh, rather well sorted sands, <coughs> mainly composed of quartz grains. And when we go up in this sequence, uh, we see immediately some differences. we see that we have uh, much more finer material coming in with the uh, first dark earth. What else do we see within this first dark earth? We have the accumulation of organic material, we have a lot of perturbation, earthen glands, we have dusty clay coatings, we have traces of, uh, of cutting on this material, uh, well, all the, the, this kind of evidence goes, of course, into the direction of nature and agricultural soil. Then again, if we go back to this first image, no, this one. <coughs> Can't see the thickness of the image. No. Well, we see that we're basically dealing with a rather thick horizon here. So just explaining. Uh, these are being agricultural activities is a bit difficult. So what happened basically? Uh, well, the other phytoliths have been of great help because when we looked at these phytoliths, we saw that most of them were cut or were, were broken, broken pieces of phytoliths. And we've seen this before uh, on an excavation in Brussels. We also identified an accumulation of, uh, of this kind of broken phytoliths, and that we interpreted it as being uh, the result of colluvium coming from upslope, implying, of course, that upslope there have been some, have been some agricultural activities going on, and that these phytoliths just went down slope and got broken. So that's our hypothesis for the moment, but. Not all the phytoliths that we observed were broken, uh, and we still had some articulated ones, as you can see on this picture. We also had some clusters of uh, dendritic phytoliths. So now the idea is that we will go further and try to interpret these and see whether we can identify the crops that have been 
cultivated on the spot itself. Now, uh, as we are talking about cultivation, it also implies that we have to add some manure to the soil, especially because, as we have seen, uh, the, the, the soils were initially very poor. We just had quartz sands. Uh, and, well, we do have quite uh, some evidence for that. We have the uh, presence of all these, these coprolytic and phosphatic materials. We had a bit of household waste, not too many. Well, we have some charcoal fragments, some bone fragments, some burnt burn fragments, we had some ceramics. So, all in all, we interpreted this first phase as being uh, an ancient crop field with an input of uh, a co constant input, basically, of, uh, of colluvium coming from upslope. So that's for the first phase. When we go up in the sequence, we see that things change. All of a sudden, we have a much more porous horizon. You can see that in a lot of pores here. We have much more bioturbation. And not only by earth roots, but also by, uh, by root galleries. <coughs> okay, the earth roots and roots. We still have uh, the presence of these, these kind of dusty coatings. And we also have the accumulation of, uh, of material, uh, of domestic <coughs> waste. We have some burn bones, we, we have some charcoal fragments, and we still have some coprolites, and also some ashes. So the idea is here that we are not just having this, this kind of ongoing agricultural activities, but probably that we also have, are facing some kind of, of pasture or grassland. Uh, this has also been confirmed by, by the observation of quite some mole galleries during the, the field study, which is rather something that you would put into a grassland. Now, when we go further up in the sequence, we start to see a real change. And Basically what happens is that we still have organic material, we still have bioturbation, but we have an accumulation of much more material, as you can already see on this picture, and we still have these traces of reworking of the soil. Uh, we still have excrements, and as I told you, much more and much diverser uh, quantities of, uh, of anthropogenic material, of uh, house, still household waste, as you can see we have some, some shells, some eggshells, some bone material, some fish bones, uh, we also have some ashes within it, and some ceramics, and another category that also appeared now is artisanal waste. We have some fragments of uh, silica slag and metallurgical slag, And we also have some building remains in this phase. As you can see here, we have some fragments of, uh, of mortar. We have some, uh, some fragments of small fragments of brick. <coughs> and well, the idea is that in this phase, things really start to change. We, we, we are no longer in this, ki this kind of rural area where people were doing agriculture. Now, now it becomes a much more densely built area because we see all these, these remains of building of building debris, we also have um, the artisanal waste appearing, so we're thinking about a much more urbanized environment, and also probably some, some kind of back, you know, we were situated uh, somewhere in some kind of backyard. Now when we go to the utmost part of the sequence, we still see these traces of um, metallurgical activities, which are still present, we also have, again, the, the, this kind of building debris and also still a lot of household waste. We have some ashes, we still have coprolytic material. But what we see is a tendency of, of most of the material to be more oriented in horizontal ways. Um, and that brings us somewhere that, that people must have been trampling the area. So maybe it's not a continuous garden at that, uh, that period, but rather something like yeah, a backyard where people were doing all kinds of things, but still in this more urbanized environment. Now if we summarize this sequence, we go for uh, cultivation in Kluvium in the first phase, then we have some grassland with episodes of uh, cultivation, then we have the break where we probably enter in a more urbanized phase, where we have the accumulation of waste, different kinds of waste and gardening, and in the uppermost part, more some uh, kind of surfaces that have been trampled. Now, um, 
what about the implications of studying such one profile? Well, we can tell something about what happened at this location, of course, but we can also tell something about the, the broader environment, especially because we know now that we have colluvium coming in. This implies that there have been agricultural activities upslope, which is right in the center of where the arche archaeologists and historians have situated the town. Uh, so now the thing that becomes of utmost importance is dating. Been, uh, there have been a lot of communications yesterday that also stressed this importance of good dating. Well, we were entering in exactly the same problems. So and now uh, I've been discussing a lot with the archaeologists that we should really try to get proper dates for this oldest phase because the only thing that has been dated up now is this part where we enter into this, this really urban, uh, more urbanized environment where we end up in the 14th, 15th century. But all this is still a big question mark. Is it 10th century? Is it 12th century? You have basically no idea. So this also <coughs> questions this, uh, this kind of reconstruction that has been made for the 12th century this town, uh, where we see that they put still quite some agricultural activities downslope, but maybe there was also still some agriculture going on upslope. So that's a question that still needs to be solved. Thank you.